So this is an experiment in documentation. It's just a little walkthrough of this open source high-level synthesis tool. So as the name suggests, this is an open source HLS tool that uses LLVM. So uh, if you look down at the repository structure, you know, we've got the Travis builds, there's a source directory, a test directory, and, you know, a list of dependencies and build and test instructions, which are basically just running CMake and then running the all tests executable. So then for the actual files, um, you know, there's an experiments directory, which you can ignore, basically, uh, then there's a source directory, which contains um, the meat of the project. And then there's a test directory, which contains uh, catch a unit testing framework, and then a bunch of test utils and the actual tests, there isn't much independence, you can pretty much ignore it. Um, and then the meat of the tests are in this very large file that I'm planning to break up called scheduling.cpp. And then there's just a bunch of Verilog files. Well, there's a gitignore and a Travis and a CMake. And then there's a bunch of Verilog utilities that are used in testing, like built-ins, which are, uh, you know, modules like shift left and sign extend and add and things like that. Um, and then there's all these TB files, which are uh, handwritten test benches for code that's generated in the unit tests. So this is, um, for example, compare greater than underscore TB is a handwritten Verilog uh, unit test of this module compare greater than, which doesn't exist yet because it's generated in the unit tests. So then if you go um, inside of the test directory, you can take a look in scheduling uh, at the test cases to get an idea of what the workflow of this system is like. So, um, <coughs> you know, here's a really simple test case, um, schedule a single store operation. And basically we fire up LLVM and then we load the file single store, which corresponds to loading from this LL files, the file uh, single store, oops, excuse me, we're using single store.cpp here. Um, where is that? Right here, um, which includes the built-in RAM class template and writes the value five to address zero of the RAM. And so in scheduling.cpp, um, in that first unit test, uh, we load the CPP module single store.cpp. Uh, we do some setting of global variables and then we get the function single store. We print it out. Um, we define what are called interface functions, which basically just tell you what the hardware meaning of RAM read and write are because the RAM template is a built in rather than something that's synthesized. So this just gives the built in definitions. Um, <coughs> and then we set some hardware constraints on the RAM. Um, we call schedule interface, which generates the schedule, uh, which is basically just uh, an abstract description of a finite state machine. We do some unit tests, and then we convert the schedule into what's called an STG, which stands for state transition graph, which is just a more explicit representation of a finite state machine, print it out, do some more unit tests. And then we build the micro architecture, which is um, just something that basically takes the STG and makes it even closer to a standard hardware description language. And then as the last step, we emit Verilog for the microarchitecture to the file single store.v. Um, and that's pretty much what the test benches look like in the general flow of the tool. So if you actually look in the source directory, <coughs> the files here are algorithm, which is just a utility file that I use in C++ projects, LLVM code gen, which is just a bunch of code generation utilities for um, producing LLVM that I like to use uh, in case you want to write the LLVM that you're going to synthesize manually instead of uh, loading it from a CVP file. <laughs> Scheduling and Verilog backend are really the meat. Uh, utils is just a bunch more utilities for string generation and LVM generation and things like that. The two meaty pieces are the scheduler, which is sort of the middle of the HLS tool, and the Verilog backend, which is the backend of the tool, which emits Verilog. Um, so <laughs> and there's a bunch of stuff about um, these you know, execution actions, which are basically um, uh, things that you can use to express constraints on the scheduler and... Um, you know, a bunch of things like ports and um, a module spec, which is just an abstract description of a module, um, which conveys some scheduling and uh, code generation information, a bunch more, uh, you know, operation related stuff. Here's all the op types that are currently supported. Um, some old code. Here's the hardware constraints class, which basically contains um, a bunch of information about the latencies and resource counts of different operations and also um, some information about mapping of pointers onto RAMs and information about um, built-in module types like the RAM class or the FIFO class. Um, 
And then as you go further down, <coughs> uh, this is one of the meteor classes, right? Schedule. So basically what the tool does is it loads in C++ through Clang, um, and that converts it into LLVM. And then it basically converts uh, the LLVM codes, data and control dependencies into an integer linear programming problem called Z3, which is a SMT solver to solve the problem. <coughs> and then loads the result back out into this schedule class, um, which gives you basically the start and end times of instructions and basic blocks and things like that. <coughs> and there's a bunch of different ways to produce a schedule. You can use, uh, you know, the schedule function function um, or schedule pipeline or schedule interface, which is a wrapper in the tests. And then here's just a bunch of um, uh, stuff that's used in the description of the finite state machine. Here's uh, state transitions in the finite state machine. Here's a description of a pipeline. And then here's the actual state transition graph, which um, state transition graph is actually type deft to STG because that's kind of a long thing to write out. But here's the main build STG function that you use to turn a schedule into a state transition graph and to sort of make it more explicit. And there's a bunch of stuff about setting constraints um, you know, that you can feed into the scheduler that's kind of boring. I don't really want to go over. Um, and a lot of it's sort of redundant to just utility code. And then if you look in the scheduler.cpp, um, it's basically just uh, an implementation of a bunch of code that walks over an LLVM program, translating control and data dependencies into integer linear constraints, and then feeding them into a constraint solver and reading out a schedule from the result. <coughs> and then in the Verilog backend, there's a bunch of stuff, but the critical uh, class is really the microarchitecture, which is sort of just a grab bag class, which contains an STG and uh, you know, a description of the control path and the assignment of instructions to functional units and things like that. So it's just a more elaborated representation of the finite state machine uh, that we produce during scheduling, and that's a little bit closer to um, uh, to real hardware. And then there's a bunch of stuff for generating test benches and um, adding assertions to the generated Verilog. And then there's a bunch of different variations on the build microarchitecture function, which converts an STG into a microarchitecture. Here's a bunch more debugging related stuff. So the basic flow is um, uh, what you see in these test cases. And there's a bunch of you know little variations on it. But basically what you do is you create your C++ file. Um, you load it in. You find the function that you want to synthesize. You define any built-in template classes in the interface functions and hardware constraints. Um, you schedule, you convert the schedule to a state transition graph, you convert the state transition graph into a microarchitecture, and then you emit Verilog code. And uh, other than that, it's mostly just utilities to help with text generation and things like that. And the tool can do some limited pipelining and some limited optimizations, but it's a pretty simple translation right now, um, though that's improving all the time. So take a look around, and if you really like this repo, then feel free to give it a star on GitHub.